February the 1st, 2020, still in lockdown and travel restrictions in place, I was restricted to my local Eastbourne Beach. Work had finished, which meant it was time to bring out the thermals and head to the shingle in search for my first ever ray. After work, I knew I had to be quick as high tide was fast approaching. A great session it turned out to be, although not necessarily what I might have been expecting. Sit back, relax, pour yourself a cup of tea and welcome to another episode. You're watching a Jake Davison production. Well, welcome back to another episode um, of Beach Fishing with me, Jake Davison. Um, today we're on the Eastbourne. I finished work about half an hour ago. I packed the car last night, the bait's defrosted, and we're out for a ray. High tide is in about half an hour's time. Um, ideally, I would have liked to fish two hours before high tide, at least or three hours, you know, and then fish it out. But unfortunately, work gets in the way sometimes, doesn't it? So um, we're out today. We're after rays. We've got pulley panel rigs on. Uh, one is baited with full squid and the other is baited with a bluey bait. Um, I most likely expect hopefully a form back ray but I haven't actually caught one off this stretch of the beach. I think I'm just unlucky but time will tell. Thank you for watching the video, subscribe the channel, watch all the other videos if you like and uh, I hope you enjoy this one. So you're along for the journey, let's see how it goes. So we've got a bite on that right hand side rods. Um, you might see it go off in a minute. I'm expecting it's just a whiting. Uh, that's the one with a full squid on it, on that right hand side. Hopefully, it will go off on camera. Oh, the left one's going now. That one's on the bluey. As I said, I'm, I'm expecting whiting. Really, I want a large pull down bite or a slack bite, and that will indicate a better fish. But uh, there's fish out there, so that's good. So there's a load of goal activity out there. They're just diving where my swim is. Well, swim, bait position, whatever you want to call it. They're all in that vicinity, and that's where I've cast. Just out there. So hopefully there's some bait fish or something causing a disturbance. And uh, fingers crossed, a better fish. A bite on the right one again. Look at that. Just white in bites, but we'll wait for the bigger fish. Right, so uh, there's plenty of videos on how to bait up squid, but I thought I'll, um, I'll show you if, if you're interested. You're probably not, but this is how I do it. It's probably completely wrong, probably not the best way, but ho oh, hum. Right, so we're going to get our squid, which is a whole one here. We're going to get the bottom hook. Now that's a bit of old squid I've got on there. I always leave that on. I don't like to waste any bait. I just keep that topped up there. Right, so we're going to take this here and we're going to pin it through the, uh, the top here, okay? So we're going to pop it through and then just pass it all the way through so you've got the line coming through, all right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it back like this, just like so, so the line's facing this way. And you're going to place it in and pull it through like that. And then just pull the line tight like that. So this works quite well if it's on a singular hook. Um, I, what I tend to do, these are massive bass hooks. Now these are size 6.0. And a worm, a worm bass hook has got little grooves and it will help keep the squid in place. So with the other hook, we'll just put that little bit of rotten squid there. With the other hook, just twist the line around it a few times. Like so. And then I just nab it. Nab it in the top like that. So that makes a lovely big squid bait and we'll just elasticate loads, lots and lots of elastic around there. So it's a cold hold the squid bait like so, grab our elastic, uh, elastic and then wrap around, wrap around the squid, preferably not the head. As long as you've got a hook point protruding and the bait is out there, I don't see any problem in how you do it. At the end of the day, as I said, if there's a bait out there and there's a hook point facing, there's no, there's no wrong way to do it. There is easier ways to do it. I don't think there's wrong wrong ways to do it. And then just bang that in like that. Just snap it off. And then we'll leave that, that bit of squid just, just hanging on there. So, one second. There you go. Nice squid bait. We'll hook that side, we're gonna hook that side. We'll clip that down to a bit of the lead weight and we'll get it out there. 
Now, I thought I'd just show you something. Um, we're getting a lot of whiting bites, I think, what they're out there. Um, and I'm just gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is because it's quite the middle of the day, and um, I'm sort of waiting till it goes, not dark, but a bit dimmer for a ray. I'm just very quickly gonna try a rig which I've created. Uh, I've never used this rig before. This is a totally new rig for me. It's a free hook. I've called it a flatty rig, and it, it is a flatty rig. And I'll be upset to lose this one because it took me a long time to build. But let's open it up and I'm just going to show you what, what it is. Um, really it's a bit of a tester and it's a bit of a, a gamble, shall we say, um, as to whether it's going to work or not. But I've got a bit of squid here and I thought while the whiting are biting, sort of rhymes doesn't it, um, we could give it a little go. And what I've done is I've also attached, it's a, it's a free hook clip down, uh, clip down, it's a free hook flapper, but at the same time I've attached a sort of a lure to it. And I'm just curious, it's a little soft plastic lure, you'll see it in a minute. Sorry, it's a bit, um, it takes a while to untangle this just because there's so much of it. Right, as you can see, it's all very, it's all very tangled up, it shouldn't be, but if it is, once I've untangled it all, it'll be okay. Um, so yeah, it's a free hook flapper and it's got a little uh, jelly, uh, jelly lure on it, soft plastic. Uh, so we're gonna run, find it all. Right, there we go, so we've got the ends, there we go. As you can see at the bottom, it's got a little, there's two hooks there. There's a two, you can see, there's a little jelly soft hook which I've just crimped into place. And on the bottom there's a proper hook. And it just leads up to our normal two hook flapper up the top here. So we're gonna attach this up and we're gonna see, put some squid on it, bait it up, just with a few little bits of squid just like that there. And we're just gonna see if we if we can catch a couple of whiting on it um, and maybe maybe some bait to use for the rays. So let's get all that attached up. Well, there it is in all its glory. It's got more Vazel the Jazzle than a Brazilian stripper. Lots of spinners and bits and bobs on it, but that's what I meant by that jig look. Connect it to the weight, connect it to the top. We'll fire it out there. Give it a go. Got a bite on that small rod, as you can see. Quite an aggressive bite, actually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that? That's a slack bite. Let's, let's strike it. Not sure if we've got it on there. But the line dropped right slack to the floor, which can be a bass or a bigger fish moving the weight inward. Nothing big on, if anything. Oh, we missed it. Right, let's, ta let's get this one out there. Got a bite on that small rod, as you can see. Quite an aggressive bite, actually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that? That's a slack bite. Let's, let's strike it. Not sure if we've got it on there. But the line dropped right slack to the floor, which can be a bass or a bigger fish moving the weight inwards. Nothing big on, if anything. Oh, we missed it. Right, let's, ta let's get this one out there. Right, so I'm just gonna bring in that right hand rod with a big squid on it. Oh. And uh, see if we've still got the bait on there, or if we have about three whiting attached to one panel. Um, we've had constant bites on this one, we've had constant bites on both of them. But because I'm fishing larger hooks today, well, not on the left one now. I'm fishing for um, anything which anything which takes on the left one now. I have got an issue with patience. You may have realised this. I struggle to keep one bait out there and, and one tactic when I know there's fish biting I feel like I just want to catch but 
The right hand one today, either way, will stay on a complete squid and we'll just give it a go. That way I can't say I'm not trying. Ah, do we have a fish on here? Or do we have a complete squid? No, we have a fish. Whiting there. They do call me the Whiting Man these days. Um, which is not a great name, to be honest. I'd rather be called Mr. Cod, but I've got to catch a better fish than this, so... We'll get this one back. Absolute vicious bites. As I said, you just cannot get away from them. Pew, pew, pew! Behind me, you've got two rods out. Oh, the nearest one on a, a whole squid again, you can see it. It's just, it's going already. Problem is when the whiting are in, and they are today, evidently, is they don't leave you alone. Whatever bait you put out there, they'll attack. Even if you put whiting on, they'll, uh, they'll still go for it. In fact, what I'll do, is the next whiting I catch, if I catch another one, which I'm confident I probably will, is I'll take that whiting as bait and I'll, I'll take the sides off it and I'll fillet it on the, on the panel instead of a squid. And I'll show you, they'll go straight for it. They're cannibalists, these whiting, I tell you. It's quite, some of them are quite strong bites as well. But I just want something different today. I'd rather sit it out and wait for a dogfish or a anything small ray a small bass that's why i tell you something when the whiting are in if i can't go bait pumping for lugworm i will not buy it because you'll get through 10 lugworm in 10 minutes and that's three pound 50 a go so if i can't pump myself um i won't i won't use worm still going unbelievable Have a as expected, another whiting and some weed. So that took a little little bit of squid. And the one we lost earlier was actually on the bottom uh, hooks. I'm one, I think it was on this, but I can't be 100% sure. But yeah, second whiting, there's loads out there. We've got a, um, a lot of bites on the mackerel head still. I'm tempted to keep, keep that one and for bait, actually, and just show you that they're cannibals. We'll do it. Well, this is going on the hook. When that one comes in, I'll just prove to you. Whiting will eat whiting. We're going to put a whiting on the hook. Um, so I'm going to fillet it and show you. Best way to kill that really quickly is just get a sharp knife and drive it through the top of the skull. That, that just kills it instantly and it's, I don't, you know, it's, it's out then, it's done. So we'll just make a quick incision behind here. So we'll take off, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off a fillet, so we're gonna run the knife down here. It's not a very good knife, this, because I've used it for a lot of things and I haven't sharpened it up, unfortunately, recently. So we'll, Drive it. Yeah, when your hands are cold, it can be very difficult. We'll I'll make a big mess of this. No, that's right. Here we go. So we'll run it down the spine, and you can do this with any fish, mackerel or, or anything like that. All right. So we'll bring in that bit of um, mackerel head, and I'll put that bit of whiting on there for you. Just to show you that they'll eat that, and actually, probably something else will as well. But let's let's give it a go. And I'll elasticate that big big bit of whiting on there. Cast out as far as I can go, and even if we're getting knocks, you'll see we'll get we'll get bites on it. As you can see, a nice little parcel of bait wrapped up nicely. Now, you would have just seen me debating whether to walk down the bank just to get nearer the shore so I can get an extra 15 yards out. And I decided against the idea. 
because actually the swells today are really big. They're coming up by about five, six, seven meters. So they could catch you out. I've got waders on and I, it's not that deep, but you just don't know. It's not worth, I think when it's such a steep bank, it's just not worth risking it. You see, I was just walking along the beach a little bit, having a little wander, and this is a really good sign. Now, these are ray eggs, and what happens is they lay these eggs, and the little uh, rays will, will come out fully fledged, and off they go. And there's quite a few along this beach here. I can see another one there. There's another one just behind me. And that's great. That means the rays are coming in. They're depositing their eggs over the ground here. And it means they're around. It means they're breeding and they're feeding, so that's great. But... They're yet to come on the end of my hook, and I doubt they will, but God loves a trier, and I am one. That is for sure. Right, so, another whiting, nothing, uh, no surprises there. Been on for quite a while, I think. The good thing is, the, uh, that bank now, we should be able to drop our tripod down slightly nearer the uh, seafront, so we can get a little bit further out, but... Another little whiting, and funnily enough, that was on the whiting I um, put out earlier, so shows it works. We'll get her back. That is about where it's getting now, um, and I'm confident no way they're going to take me in, because they've already got up to about there when I was running back on one of them, so I think we'll bring the tripod down into the middle, and uh, we'll keep trying. Right, so third fish of the day, as expected. Another whiting. We've got uh, quite a few bites on the um, whiting as bait though. So uh, it does say, it just proves it's a bit of, bit of difference. We'll, we'll let this one go as we've got some bait means I need to go and venture out there and try not to get a booty. Well finally we've got five minutes to sit down. <laughs> um, still bites going constantly. Um, as I was saying earlier when I was doing some casting and bits and bobs I'm very impatient. Um, I really struggle to sit still and wait on a, on a bait and, and wait on big hooks and just sit it out if I can see there's taps, because if there's taps, it means there's fish there, and as a fisherman, I want to catch fish. I don't particularly want to catch whiting today. I'm, I'm not really up for them, really. I, I don't mind catching them because they save the blank and all that. But when you're firing out big baits, um, even whole mackerel, you're, just, you're getting pestered by them all the time. And it's, uh, it is a little irritating, but there's not much you can do about it, unfortunately. We're, um, it's the 1st of February tomorrow, and I'm very limited to where I fish. So I live in Eastbourne, so at the moment, really, I can only fish in Eastbourne due to the lockdown. Very aggressive bite right there. Let's turn you around. It's not a very good angle to uh, witness bites, but you'll be able to see it go in there. The slightly taller one in the image. So yeah, I'm very limited to where I can fish. So. Um, I finished work today at 12 o'clock. I was up at 4 a.m., so please don't call me lazy. And I've uh, decided to come down. It's been two weeks since my last video. So I thought I'll come down, throw a few baits out there. A few formback rays have come out recently in the area. Once I'm in Seaford Way, some up here. Not many, just two or three. So um, there are about. I did want to get out in the kayak today, but couldn't. Um, just due to the time factors, really. I'm only going to have three or four hours out there. It's not really worth it. So I thought we'll come down to the beach and have a relaxing session. But hopefully the whiting will disappear shortly as the tide goes out. And uh, my big oats will be left out there for a whopping ray. Who knows? So um, you might be able to see for the more keen-eyed of you, we've moved down from the top of that bank. Um, we've just moved down to the bottom because it just saves me constantly running down and casting and bringing it up. So. Um, I'm confident there's no way he's going to take us out now. So, just a lot of whiting, I'm afraid. Uh, and the uh, keen watchers as, as well, who watch quite often, will realise that's all I've caught recently is whiting. Um, I'm hoping a uh, week's time Sunday, 
we're going to go out for rays uh, late evening. It's meant to be rays today, but it still could be. You know, we've, we've got whole squid out there, so we're not not targeting them. But um, the whiting seem to be indulging in the squid uh, quicker than any other fish can get on it. So, but it's nice to be out anyway. We're just going to see see what we can get really. Take it home, sit on the kayak in the bar. Look, guys, look at that. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, we've got the rods now on the lower deck, as I've said earlier, and we've just had that whiting there with the rods cam 101. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, as soon as it hits the deck, we're still we're getting bites. We're just still on the squid. Like, it's been quite a nice afternoon, actually, for me. I like just coming after work, there's no stress, fling a few rods out and see what happens, but I would just like there to be a, a few different species really. I, w I really wanted to go to Seaford to be honest, but I w couldn't really be naughty and uh, disappear off there because it's about 11 miles away from me, so I can't really call that local, whereas here it's two minutes, so much more local. Just thought I'd very quickly talk about positioning on a beach. Um, here at Eastbourne and here along the whole of the south coast, the tide runs east to west. It, doesn't, it, it does go out, but it's, it's east to west. So, for example, take Eastbourne. When I arrived, the tide was, was from going from high to low, so the tide was ebbing. And that means it's going towards Littlehampton, which is down that way and towards Southampton, um, Dorset, Devon, that kind of way. So it's going uh, towards the west. All right. So uh, low is low is Little Hampton for me. That's how I associate it and remember it. That's where the tide flows. And if it's if the tide's coming in, so a flood tide, a high tide, the tide's coming in towards the higher. It's going towards Hastings. It's going east and up towards Dover. So when you're thinking about it, you've got to try and remember it. So that you're positioning yourself on the beach in the right place because obviously the rigs are going to move a little bit it doesn't matter if you have a four to six ounce gripper weight the tide a str strong spring tide will move your weight so for example today i set up on my east side of the beach as the tide was going west so i set up this side i cast out here and my weight can drift that way and I've got the whole beach and it's never going to cross any groins. You only have to think about that if you've got groins. Otherwise it doesn't really matter where you go. But just a little, um, if there's any beginners watching or even I, some experienced anglers even don't even think about that. Um, but that's something you've got to think about when there's groins on the beach. Right, rod cam 101. There's been quite a few little knocks on this one the last, I don't know, five minutes. So as soon as it goes again, we'll pick it up, feel it, and then we'll see. Right, let's go. Let's wind. We'll take you for the ride. So I'm gonna walk down to the front, the sea, without trying to get wet. This is when I, <laughs> this is when I lose the GoPro. I'll try and feel for it now, really. See that? See what I mean? That uh, it drops right back and it shoots right in. Feels a bit heavier, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not confident. There's one on here. But at the same time, I, I've said this a few times, and so it's. I'm gonna highly. I'm gonna say there's nothing on it, but it's knocking a little bit, so you never know. 
but that may just be the shingle. Let's keep winding it steadily. It wasn't a bad cast this one to be fair. Oh, it was in the surf. I don't like it when it hits the surf because that is when you generally lose, lose a fish. Oh, there's something on. Ah, it is. Oh, what a surprise. A whiting. There she is, covered in. It is a whiting, yeah. Some, for a second, I thought it might have been a cod. A cod, don't be stupid, right? I'll get this one unhooked and get it back. A bite there. Look at that. A dogfish. <laughs> First one off the beach, actually, I've ever had. So much better of a bite. So, to unhook him, grab the tail and hold him, hold him from the back. Or just grab him tight. But, pretty strong, these dogfish. They'll try and curl, curl around your, your arm. You've got to hold them pretty tight. That was literally, that was probably only about 20 yards out. Hang on. There you go. Get the hook out. She's messing me around there. Right, there we go. Nice dogfish. Fantastic. Worth coming out, worth persevering. Taking on a whole squid. Quite a pretty fish, really. <laughs> Beautiful. So. First beach fishing video where we haven't just caught a white in from place. You see they've got little little teeth in there. Yeah. Nice fish. We'll go and get her back. Well chuffed with that. Excellent. Mwah. So we've just got on the way to put the uh, dogfish back to his home. He's been <laughs> he's been trying to cut me up, bless him. I'm right, gonna walk out just a little way and then let him see you later baby make sure he gets out yeah healthy goes Woohoo! happy days well just had that lovely dogfish um well chuffed with that look some people catch dogfish all the time but for anglers which don't and that's myself that's the second one i've ever caught actually um, it's a buzz, you know, you're catching something new. And just as I was saying earlier, that's all I was getting is whiting on the videos. I persevered, I thought, no, I'll keep going. Even though the tide's pushing out, it's not ideal tides. I thought, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep at it. And there we go, a beautiful dogfish. First one off the beach from me, absolutely chuffed. I've still got some bites. Just had a call from the other half. She's happy for me to stay out, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna stay out. <laughs> We'll give it about half an hour and I'll slowly pack away, go home, have some nice dinner and, uh, and put this video film together. Really happy with that. Well chuck. Alright, so camera's attached to my rod. We're going to wind down to the beach with a slack, slackish line but not, not so it's tight. The other rod's got bites on it. I'm going to have this as my last two strikes in i know that seems silly but i've very i've got a very early start to, tomorrow at work so i need to go home and have some dinner and sort of dog out and things like that so normal life things i can feel that but i'm gonna pull that onto my chest it's not gonna be perfectly straight but as soon as i can feel it we'll strike into it Right. Yeah, that's a bit straight for you guys. Don't know if you like this fish cam 101. Oh, did we miss it? Possibly. Possibly missed it. What a shame. Oh. I think we just missed that one, which probably means it was just a small small whiting it wouldn't surprise me but 
we'll wind that one in slowly and then we'll go and pack up this rig and stuff and then we'll have a look at the other rod and see if we can get a fish on just to end the day but if not it doesn't matter we've had a lovely day today finish work at 12 come out catch some white in and a lovely dogfish oh no there we go we have got one there she is we'll unclip you another little whiting nothing nothing exciting so we'll get that one unhooked we'll put her back the other rods bouncing away we're gonna tack put our tackle away and we'll um, we'll head home so uh let's go and see what's on that rod in the last rod to go home and I must admit it's not going to be my last cast I'm casting out again <laughs> another dogfish how fun they're like buses today I've never ever had one off the beach right ever I had one on my kayak the other week and um, I'll say the other week before lockdown probably a month and a half two months ago now so one on my kayak never ever had one off the beach I've beached quite a bit and I've had two in one evening I really like them, I think they're fantastic little fish. Let's just try and grab him. Spewing out some stones there. Look at that. Look at that. Another little dogfish. <laughs> fantastic. I really like them, I think they're lovely little fish. Bull husks they are known for when they're eating. These are all going to go back. I really quite like them. Funny little creatures, aren't they? Right, I'm going to slip this one back, put one more bit of squid on and give it another half an hour, I think, because if the fishing's good, how can I leave? See you later. Right, well, um, I know I said it was going to be my last cast, but I'm what you call a born and bred fisherman. One cast, last cast is never the last cast. So I've had two dogfish and I've never had a session like this on the beach where I've actually caught new things. I sound inexperienced now, but I'm, I'm not. I just haven't been very lucky, unfortunately. And to be honest with you, I've only lived down here a year and I haven't really put, I haven't even done a whole night. like. That's, you know, so that's that's why, really. Um, but I've come after work, as I've said. I'm down here, I'm doing it. My head, head feels great. I've got another bite on that big squid. Just catch it in the corner there, you'll just see it. There you go, look. It's because it's on selfie mode, it's a bit tricky. Oh, there we go. That there is going to be tripping over the tripod there. That there is going to be my last bite. I feel like I should stick it out for longer, but I genuinely haven't actually got much bait left. I've got like two squid left. And I genuinely need to go home and have some dinner. It's a good little bite. Will we get a hat trick of dogfish? Or will I get my first ever ray? It's a nice bite. But a ray bite, from what I've heard and what I've seen, is boing few goals around my swim as well. Right, so this is going to be my last winding. 
try and share with you guys what it might be. We might not have anything on the end, but I'm gonna feel for it. As soon as it bites, I'll strike into it. See if we can get a third dogfish. Or maybe my target species of the session, which is a ray. But uh, they're quite elusive, those rays. And to be honest with you, night time's a lot better for them. I missed it unfortunately, it, it, it went, but definitely not a dogfish because they're very heavy, you, can, you know when it's a dogfish. But we've got to have one last cast haven't we, if we don't have a last cast we've, uh, we've failed. It feels heavier as it gets near in but I, don't, I genuinely don't think it's heavy. Oh no! We have. There we go. Last fish of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Just, just to tease us, and you know, we, we've missed them, haven't we? We've had two dogfish in a row. We might be missing those pin whiting. So just a little whiting. Very small one at that. Right. I'm going to get that one in the back pack the gear up and uh, and we'll say goodbye well what a wonderful way to end that session wasn't expecting too much today but we got a good number of whiting which was expected they're a bit annoying at times but they kept the action busy didn't they and two dogfish at the end fantastic really happy with those really really pleased i hope you've enjoyed the video like it comment on it definitely subscribe to the channel because more to come and uh, i really hope you have a good week thank you for joining us and take care.